Hey everyone, Bill Parrish here from GTT Audio and welcome to the channel today. Today I wanted to talk about something that I think is so obvious but often overlooked and it's, it's a simple thing that I really don't hear anyone talking about and I see it when I go from room to room out on, out on installs, uh, I see it at trade shows, it's, it's all over the place. And that's more about how to treat the binding post on the back of your speaker. And what the hell am I talking about? Well, we're, we're going to get into a nice little discussion here. Um, first of all, as you know, there's different speakers with a single set of binding posts, two sets of binding posts, bi-wireable, and then three sets of binding posts, tri-wireable. I, I don't understand. I would have to have a, uh, a speaker manufacturer explain to me why they would put the tweeter, the mid-range, and the uh, woofer all on a single set of binding posts. To me, um, yeah, I, I just don't, I just don't get it. Um, maybe on an inexpensive speaker, but on a uh, more expensive speaker, to me, uh, it makes no sense, especially, especially with back EMF, which is uh, back uh, electromagnetic force. So when the amplifier launches current into the speaker, the woofer goes out and then you've got that big magnet on there and after it goes out when it comes back it's like a tidal wave of electronics coming back down the cable and in the ultimate sense you never want that woofer and that tidal wave if you will to see the tweeter or the mid-range and so you want to try to get rid of that and so that's that's one of the reasons why people uh, buy wire and buy amp to, um, to negate that but um, so let's talk about buy wire speakers so you buy or buy wireable speakers you buy a set of speakers and we're gonna treat this right on the onset just talking about jumpers the manufacturer gives you a set of jumpers tying the let's say the, the top half of the speaker to the bottom half of the speaker. And let's talk about a three-way design. So if we've got a three-way design, usually the top set of binding post is handling the tweeter in the mid-range and the bottom set of binding post is hand, handling the woofer. You should check with the manufacturer though to find out. But that, um, you know, and you should understand where the crossover points are as well because if you're going to land a single set of speaker wires onto a speaker and then jump to the next set of binding post jumpers that's what we're going to be talking about you should always land on the mid-range the mid-range is where 85 percent of the music content is unless you're playing pipe organ music all day long but, uh, you know, typical music, 85% of it uh, is, is definitely in that mid-range. So that's where the cable should land. But uh, back to jumpers. So a speaker manufacturer, we got a three-way speaker, and we have a, a speaker that's bi-wireable. A set of binding posts that's on the top, and one set that's sitting below it. And it could be side to side. So a typical manufacturer will give you a set of jumpers like this that tie, tie them together. Tie, the, tie them together. And this is about the worst thing I've ever seen. I mean, it's tin plate with black chrome and it just, it just simply horrible. Uh, you ever get anything like this run and cut the cord off a lamp strip the ends and use that instead this is terrible but this came with a set of speakers now why would a manufacturer provide these with his speakers to me it's like a power cord you go out and you buy a ten thousand dollar amplifier 
and there's a $2 power cord in the box. Why? Because he feels obligated he has to give you something, but he would never expect you to use them. And most people get that with the power cord, but they don't get it with the jumpers. And that's what I'm going to try to talk to you about today. So, you know, so, and let's just make a little sidetrack here. So you got this power cord and what? So why don't they give you an expensive power cord? Because the power cord should match the rest of your cables. Why make you, why add $2,000 onto the cost of the amplifier when you're just going to leave it in the box because, I don't know, you know, you've, um, you, you want to use, well, I, I sell Kabbalah Sosna. So you want to use Kabbalah Sosna everywhere else. Well, that's what you should use on your power cord. So why would a ma an amplifier manufacturer be giving you a Nordos power cord or a Shunyata power cord when you're going to leave it in the box and you're going to use the Kabbalah? Well, that's what, that's what we are here with these binding posts. These are made to be thrown away. Get rid of them. And, you know, and then there was the ones, um, WBT made these. They kind of go over, over one set of binding posts and then uh, into another. It's tin plate. I mean, it's cheap, thin tin plate. Maybe it looks okay, but, uh, but it's not. It's not. It's tin plate. At least they gold plated this one. But again, these are these are throwaways. Now WBT has gotten a little bit better, and they've given you these nice stamped ones. And there's a little heavier gauge on there than what they used to provide. And they're gold plated, so they're not going to oxidize. But what is in the middle? probably still just tin. It, it's, it's bad. It's bad. YG comes out with these gorgeous little binding posts. And uh, they're relatively, th they're thicker than those WBT ones and that other one. I have no idea what it is. And they're gold plated and I do happen to know these are, these are pure copper on the inside. These have some oxygen-free copper. They're machined out. They're gorgeous. And out of these little bar type of binding posts, these are the best out there. And they look nice. Now, if I'm telling you not to use them, why would YG go through all this machining and polishing and make them look nice if you're just going to keep them to the side? Well, because they make a gorgeous product and they need to provide something that's commensurate to their product. But they're still not very good. Not, when, not until you get to like a cable. Now here's one speaker manufacturer that gave these, uh, they gave some cables. These, this is a lot thicker gauge than those little copper bars. I, these, I, uh, I know the guy that made these and uh, these were actually made out of uh, silver and gold. So, these were good. These were good. Uh, I wouldn't say they're the best out there, but they're very, very good. Much better sounding than the stuff that we previously talked about. And then a speaker cable company made this jumper to go in between. Again, a, about as, as good as this, you know, as, as this one here. But if you want truly a, a great jumper, my friends over at Kabbalah Sosna, I mean, come on, really? Look at the gauge. You're going to be able to get the current to all the drivers with this. All of the drivers. And you're going to, and all the drivers are going to get the same current. Look how thin this is. And this is, this is, this is cable. I mean, this is, this is good cable. Put that on the binding post. You can, you can do it like that. You can come from the bottom and go up. I mean, you can, you can hide them, but it's good, 
good solid or stranded copper. I think that's the best way of doing it. Again, this versus this, this is going to sound much better. But try it, fellas. Like I said, if you get these really bad ones out there, uh, get rid of those things, and um, or just just cut some uh, cut some 14 gauge lamp cord and try it. You can hear it for yourself. If you don't hear it, then it doesn't make a difference. All right. But what we're still doing is we're tying the tweeters to the mid range and the mid range to the woofer when we're doing jumpers. There's a better way of doing it. And I say take advantage of it, especially if you've got a serious system and you've got serious speakers and you're investing a lot into it. Shotgun bywire cables. Now what is that? There's internal bywire cables. That's where there's a, there's a single set of spades on the amplifier side. And then on the speaker side, there's four set of spades. Okay, so they take a single set and they break it into to four for the amps and the tweeter. Well, as far as back EMF's concerned, now the tweeter in the mid-range is not seeing that woofer until it gets all the way back to the amplifier. That's great. You're, you're really making a, a good difference there. But what you've done is you've halved the gauge of the cables and you've halved the current capacity that, it can, that the cable can deliver to the speakers. So, better than a jumper? Sometimes, it depends on who the, who the manufacturer is. So I would say 50% of the time yes, 50% of the time no. But the true way to do it is two sets of sping, single uh, speaker wires. Shotgun by wire, they call it. One set, you know, typical speaker wire. One set with a set of spades on at the amplifier and another set at the speaker. And then another cable with a set of spades at the amplifier and a set at the speaker. And you can stack them if your amplifier has binding a single set of binding posts. Lots of amplifiers today have two sets of binding posts made for this because it's popular, it's better, it's, uh, it's a way of taking advantage of how the, uh, how, this, how the crossovers are laid out. And if the manufacturer lays out the binding post on the back like that, that's the intended way to use them. So do it. So do it. Run two sets of speaker cables. You're, it's so much better. And it's uh, whatever you do, please don't do this. Do not use one brand of cables on the tweeter in the mid-range and another brand of cables on the woofer. You absolutely will hear it. It will not be good. It has to be the same, uh, same brand and model of cables. Same cable to the tweeter mid and to the woofer. And then there's the... Um, so then, you know, back EMF, again, doesn't see it until the circuit board or the binding post. Uh, if you have a single set of binding post on your amplifiers, then it's at the binding post. And if you have two sets of binding post on your amplifier, then it sees it inside the circuit. So very good. You're really eliminating a lot of problems. Now to take it to a whole nother level, an entirely different level, is by amping. What I do with the Sonya XVs that are sitting in front of me. So I have two sets of Heisenbergs I'm looking at, and I have one set of Heisenbergs by wired that's off of one set of binding posts going to the tweeter, another set of binding posts going to the mid range, and that's it for that amplifier. And then I have another amplifier, the second amplifier, with a set of speaker cables going to the lower mid bass and the bass units. The lower mid bass and the bass units with all this back EMF is never ever seen the mid range and the tweeter. 
that tidal wave of electrons coming back is never going to see that tweeter and that mid-range. It's totally isolated. And by that, you get just incredible clarity, which anyone that's come here could, uh, could tell you that I get. I mean, you can just sit here and just pick everything out. It's, it's, like, a, uh, it's like you're in a concert hall. Well, a little bit different than how we normally do things, but I thought I would give you a tip and try to uh, educate you. I mean, this isn't revolutionary. Uh, it's kind of common sense once you've heard it, but if you haven't heard it before, maybe you didn't think about it and you're not taking advantage of it. You know, another set of speaker cables, depending on your system, I mean, it could be a lot or it can be minimal. Uh, I can tell you that a good set of jumpers is, is minimal. Uh, this, is, this is realization here. So this is realization. It's $500. I think uh, Emotion is $250. For four pieces, too. This is for one speaker. So for, you know, it's, this, in, in the world of audio, this stuff is relatively cheap. If you, if you get the YG ones, keep them. If you ever resell your speaker, you'll need them. All the other stuff, throw away. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. I know I certainly did. Please like, share, comment below, subscribe, and we'll see you in two weeks.